Hi students, today we are going to do weight problems in number theory. Let us say we want to weigh m integral pounds on a balance which has two pounds. How should we do that? Obviously, to weigh anything we need weights. There are two options. Either we have weights of all denominations, 1 pound, 2 pound, 3 pounds, etc. Or we have large number of weights of 1 pound each. But having so many weights is not practical and this doesn't require any maths. It would be ideal if we can weigh anything with least number of weights with us. So the problem is how many minimum number of weights can be used to weigh up to m integral pounds without duplication when only one pan of the balance is used. Second, both the pans of the balance can be used. This gives rise to two cases. First one, when we are using only one pan of the balance. In this case, we can use powers of two, which means we can take weights which are of the denomination of 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, and we'll go up to 2 to the power n minus 1. All these weights can be used to weigh any integral pound as far as we use only one pan. So then how do we find this n? To find this n, we use the formula n is log of m plus 1 upon log of 2. Here log is to the base 2. Using powers of 2 is ideal as we know that any integral weight which we are weighing will be either even or odd. If it is even, we will take the weights 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, etc. Go up to 2 to the power n minus 1. All of them are even. If the weight is odd, then we will include 2 to the power 0. Now, does it mean that when we are given any weight to weigh and we can use only one pan, we have to use all the powers of two? Not necessarily. We can pick up whatever weight is needed for our case, for the weight which we are weighing. So we can pick and choose the weights from this collection. Now let us say we want to weigh 5 pounds using only one side of the balance. We can do this in four ways. First way is we take 5 weights of 1 pound each and we put all of them in one pan. Now this will add up to 5. We have used 5 weights. Let's take another case where we use one weight of 2 pounds and remaining 3 weights are of 1 pound each. Here we have used 4 weights. The number of weights in this case is 4. It has come down from the previous case. Let's see what if we take one weight of 3 pounds and the other two weights of 1 pound each. In this case, we are using 3 weights. So, it has further come down. Earlier, we were using 5 weights. Then we said 4 weights. Now, we have 3 weights. Lastly, if we take one weight of 4 pounds and one weight of 1 pound, that will when kept on the pan will add up to 5 and we can see that we have used only 2 weights. This is the case where least number of weights have been used. These are 4 ways. In the first 3 cases, the weights repeat. One has repeated and we were told repetition of weights or the duplication is not allowed. So, we will reject them. The least number of weights is 2 we saw in the last case and the two weights were 4 and 1. 4 can be written as 2 to the power 2 and 1 can be written as 2 to the power 0. When we add we get 5. Another option is to have weights of all denominations that, that is 1 pound, 2 pound, 3 pound, 4 and 5 pounds. Let's say we want to weigh 5 pounds we'll just pick up this 5 pound and put it in the pan. If we want to weigh 2 pounds, we'll pick up the weight of 2 pounds and put it in the pan. If we want to weigh 
three pounds. We'll take the three pound weight from here and put it in the pan. Here, although duplication is not happening, we are not using any weight twice, but then it's not very practical to have weights of all denominations. Let's do one example. Find the least number of weights required to weigh up to 10 pounds on one pan of a balance without duplication. Specify the weights in each case. We are given we have to weigh up to 10 pounds. So when we use the formula, we will see n value comes out to be 3.4. Now that is approximately 4 on rounding off to the nearest integer. Here m was 10, so we have taken log of 10 plus 1, which means n is 4. Now if n is 4, we will start from 2 to the power 0 and go up to 2 to the power n minus 1, which means to up to 2 to the power 3. Only these four weights will suffice to take or to weigh any weight up to 10 pounds. We'll just see in this table. What if we want to weigh 1 pound? Only one weight is needed, which is 2 to the power 0. We know that it is 1. Now, if we want to weigh 2 pounds, only one weight is needed, 2 to the power 1. We know that it is equal to 2. What if we want to weigh 3 pounds? We will use two weights, 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 1. When we put both the weights in one pan, that will add up to 3 pounds. What if we want to weigh 4 pounds? Number of weights which we will use will be just 1, 2 to the power 2. That is 4. What if we want to weigh 5 pounds? Now 2 weights are needed, 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 2. Together when they, put, they are put in the pan, they add up to 5. For 6, we again need only 2 weights, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2. Put them in a pan, you get 6. For 7, we need 3 weights, 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1 and 2 to the power 2. When added, they give us 7. Come to, we'll come to 9. For 9, again 2 weights are needed, 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 3. We add and we get 9 pounds. For 10, we'll use 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 1. Only these 2 weights are needed. When we put them in a pan, we get 10 pounds. Let's come to an example. Find the least number of weights needed to weigh up to 42 pounds, 30 pounds, 73 pounds when one pan of the balance is used without duplication. Next, find the weights to needed to weigh exactly 42, 30 and 73 pounds. Here, in the first case, we take m to be 42. When we calculate n, n will be log of 42 plus 1, which is 43, divide log 2, it will give us 5.4, which is approximated to the nearest integer and it will be 6. This means we are taking powers of 2 from 2 to the power 0 and we will go up to 2 to the power 6 minus 1. These are the minimum weights needed to weigh up to 42 pounds. To weigh exactly 42 pounds, only 3 weights are needed. So, from this collection of weights, we picked up 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 3 and 2 to the power 5. They add up and give us 42 pounds. We will put only these 3 weights in the single pan. For 30 pounds, we see that 4 weights are needed of denomination 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3 and 2 to the power 4. We, when we put them in the pan, we will get 30 pounds. How about m is equal to 73? In this case, we when we calculate n, it comes out to be 7, which means we go up to the power 2 to the power 7 minus 1 or 2 to the power 6. These many weights are the minimum weights needed to weigh up to 73 pounds. To weigh exactly 73 pounds, we need only 3 weights, 2 to the power 6, 2 to the power 3 and 2 to the power 0. They add up and give us 73 pounds. Let's come to the next case. When we can use both the sides of the balance or you can say we are allowed to use any pan, either of the pan. We can use only one pan or we can use both the pans. 
in such a case powers of three come handy and what if we want to know the least number of weights to weigh any integral pound up to x pounds we will use the powers of 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1, go up to 3 to the power n. Again, the question arises, up to what power of 3 should we go? Which means we want to find n. For that, we use the formula, half 3 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 is less than equal to x. Let's... Solve this example. Find the least number of weights required to weigh up to 10 pounds without duplication on either pan of a balance and specify the weights in each case. Now we need to know n because we will be taking powers of 3 as they have allowed us to use either side of the balance. So using the formula half 3 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 is less than equal to 10. We will take this 2 on the other side. This will give us 3 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 is less than equal to 20. Take the 1 on the other side. We get 3 to the power n plus 1 is less than equal to 21. This is less than equal to 3 to the power 3. This 3 to the power 3 is the closest power of 3, closest to 21. So we use that. And we have to remember this value has to be less than or equal to the power of 3. When we compare both the sides, n plus 1 is equal to 3, we will get n is equal to 2. So we are taking only 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1 and 3 to the power 2. Let's look at the table. Here we have calculated for each pound how many weights are needed and which weight we should put on one balance which weight we should put in the other pan. So if we want to weigh one pound only one weight 3 to the power 0 is needed and we will just put it on one pan. We know 3 to the power 0 is 1. What if we want to weigh two pounds? That would mean we need two weights. In one pan we put 3 to the power 1. In the other pan we put 3 to the power 0. Here we have shown that. 3 to the power 1 we have written as 3. Minus shows that it is on the other pan. And we know that 3 minus 1 will give us 2. Now for 3 we just need one weight which is 3 to the power 1 we get 3. If we want to weigh 4 pounds we need two weights. 3 to the power 0 and 3 to the power 1. 3 to the power 0 plus 3 to the power 1 when kept on the single pan give us 4 pounds. What about 5? In case of 5, we need 3 weights. What are those 3 weights? On one pan, we are going to take 3 to the power 2, which is 9. We are written here. And on the other pan, we are taking 3 to the power 0 plus 3 to the power 1. This adds up to 4. So 9 minus 4 gives us 5. Let's come to 6. For that, we need 2 weights only. 3 to the power 2 in one pan, 3 to the power 1 in the other pan. This will give us 6. For 7, we use 3 to the power 2 and 3 to the power 0 in one pan and 3 to the power 1 in the other pan. 8 means we are using 3 to the power 2 in one pan and 3 to the power 0 in the other pan. This gives us 8 pounds. For 9, one single weight, 3 square is used. And for 10, we use two weights, 3 to the power 0 and 3 to the power 2. When we put them in the same pan, it will give us 10. Let's see a few more examples. What if the question is, find the minimum weights needed to weigh up to 121 pounds, if either of the pan can be used? So one easy way is to go on adding powers of 3 till you get 121. Or we will see what powers of 3 add up to 121. Or we will double 121 which gives us 342. As this is closest to the power of 3 to the power 5 which is 243. So 3 to the power n plus 1 will be written as 3 to the power 5. This will give us n is 4. Thus, the required weights will be 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1, 3 to the power 2, 
3 to the power 3 and 3 to the power 4. If we add all these weights, we see we get 121 pounds. Let's look at another example. Find the minimum number of weights needed to weigh up to 111 pounds. If either of the fan can be used, we'll just double that as we see that 222 is less than or equal to 3 to the power 5. We will again solve 3 to the power n plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power 5. This gives us n is equal to 4. Again, powers of 3 starting from 3 to the power 0 going up to 3 to the power 4 are enough to find all the weights up to 111 pounds. If we weigh 3 to the power 1, 3 to the power 3 and 3 to the power 4, we will get exactly 111 pounds. What if we want to find the minimum weights needed to weigh up to 42 pounds? If either side of the pan can be used, what we'll do? We'll just double that as this is 84 and this is less than or equal to again 3 to the power 5. Because if we take 3 to the power 4, it will be 81 and 81 becomes smaller than 84. So we have to see the power of 3 from which this is less than or equal to. This again gives us n is 4. So we are using the same weights which are given above. And we can see if in, on one pan we keep 3 to the power 4. And on the other pan we take the weights 3 to the power 1, 3 to the power 2 and 3 to the power 3. This will give us 42. So on one pan this and the other pan these three weights. So this is how we solve the weight problems. You have to remember when we have to solve problems on weight, it uses partitioning of numbers. And we can always use powers of 2 and 3 to solve these such questions. Thank you so much for watching.